Two giants and I'll see. Good what? Good. So first one is for the nearest so that's the name of the employee. I've got one really again. Starting on here. Yeah. Maybe starting on here, April 2015. Don't matter, that's okay. Your name's me, or the rest is general. I can figure that out later. Okay. All right, good. So let's begin. Okay, um, welcome to uh, Morgan's Point. Um, it's very good to have gentlemen like yourselves on site. Um, right now, um, obviously, it's Christmas time coming up, and then ownership are planning to go full speed in January, February coming. Okay, my name is Brandon Harris, the manager is David Melendez, is the director is Matt Brody. Okay, one of the main things we have to deal with is language barriers with the influx of men that are coming. That was us, um, April 2015, check it out. Pardon me? That was us. Uh, you know, that's me holding the vibrator. <laughs> that's, that's me with the, the very first, the very first piles poured. That's right, and that is a milestone picture. That's why we left it on the first line. Okay, but since which, um, I think we are averaging about 10, 20 guys at that time. We actually ran up to about 300, and we actually ran up to 321 at one point. Okay, so with that, you're going to run into language barriers anyway, but not also language barriers even within English. We have different accents, different dialects, different terminologies that can throw off in a conversation. So one of the ways to mitigate that is through, through the training. Okay, both of you gentlemen have been through the um, NCCR, okay, um, with Construction Association as well as through CAISA. So that is very, very good for you guys. Okay, we're also offering um, the Neil Construction Safety Council. I'm one of the craft track trainers for NCCR, also OSHA GOV, which is located up at the college, but also OSHA Education Center is available online um, 100%. Okay, um, so I'm going to get into that and more later, but also everyone's expected to go through drug and alcohol screenings. It's impossible that anyone can be intoxicated under anything and expect to work amongst other men and other machinery. Okay, so both of you gentlemen are familiar with OSHA. Okay. So every jurisdiction has their own OSHA. Okay, England has an OSHA, America has an OSHA. Um, we are under the Bermuda Occupational Safety and Health Regulations 2009. Okay, uh, so um, also uh, what I do want you gentlemen to be aware of is that to begin the next year, we're going to have STAR training. All supervisors are expected to go through supervisor training and action reduction techniques. Okay, so that is their own program in order to um, be able to mitigate their own issues uh, amongst their men. Okay, every week we have safety meetings. So if you go to the second page that you guys hit, you'll notice you have the safety meetings. Okay, so um, that's the latest safety meeting. Every single week that meeting happens. Rain, blow, shine. If there's only one guy on site, I'll minute that one guy was in the meeting. Okay. Um, so the first page that you have is generally um, the contacts of most of the safety guys that's on site at that particular week. So for example, if you need to have somebody's car moved out of your way, then hopefully you'll be able to find um, someone on that sheet that can um, sort out your situation for you. Okay, so that's a snapshot of the safety guys that's on site that particular week. If you flip the page, or the next page over, I should say. What is later at work, um, what day to meet with us? Every Wednesday, 11.45. Every Wednesday, 11.45. 11.45? Every Wednesday. 
So the moment I first came up here, you just you had a meeting like first thing in the morning. That okay, was, so that's that what's known morning. as a all hands meeting. Okay, so with the all hands meeting, it's once a month. Okay, and that's where every single person on site um, is in that meeting. Um, every Wednesday is what you we have a committee meeting. So you have one representative per company. They will come and and represent you guys and say whatever issues you guys have got or whatever um, educational information you guys need or whatever the case may be. Okay, so that is the difference. So, so we're gonna see eleven forty five meeting happen here. The eleven forty five meeting happens, it depends on the site. Okay, so with the um, site being so large, uh, wherever the majority of the guys are, that's usually where the meeting happens. That meeting does um, move around um, as well as the old hands meeting moves around. Okay, so for example, with the old hands meeting, we also had a fire drill. So it didn't make sense to have a fire drill on one side of the um, project without the other guys being able to get to the um, emergency meeting area um, as quickly as other guys. So we had it right smack in the middle of the site and that way everyone can get to the meeting equally. Okay. Now if you go to the discussions page, okay, that what we are talking about, uh, which is the next page over, um, you notice that we have the health and safety policy, that's the top 10 of whatever um, is going on on site, and then we highlight one. Okay. Um, the next column down, you notice you have previous. So we bring up all the issues from the week before, and then we try and close all each issues that was erased so it doesn't keep reoccurring. Okay, any incidents, big, small, I don't care if it's a sweet mosquito bite. Okay, we want to know about it and we want to do something about it. And then you see currently. Okay, after currently, um, these are the discussions that were taking place in that meeting um, that at hand. Okay, um, lead okay, is leadership in energy and environmental design. That's a certification program that recognizes the best in class that was achieved by HSBC Bank on Front Street as well as uh, King Albert Memorial Hospital. And that is the same certification that um, Morgan Spain is trying to, uh, trying to achieve. And then training um, for any classes that's coming up, we list all any training classes so that anyone can jump in at any time. Okay, logistics for if you have large items coming to site where your crew has to stop what they're doing, uh, an offload of flatbed, for example. Um, then we noted so that if you need assistance, um, we can be able to help you. Okay, now orientation is what you're going to know. Even though you might see some stuff that may not even be related to you, it is important that you're familiar with, with what's going on around you. Okay, that way you can do something about it. The daily crew and hobby sheet um, that's filled out by Lee in the morning and does a very good job, is one of the best at it. Um, so um, you are to be represented on your daily crew and huddle sheet. Okay, now this is site map. You guys came in at the gate. Do you have the gate code already? 9320. Okay, this is the uh, roundabout. And after the roundabout, this is the designated parking area. The reason why this is the designated parking area is because no, there is going to be no activity in that area at any particular time. Um, so that's a safe zone um, for your private vehicles. Anywhere else you decide to park, eventually somebody's going to actually move your vehicle. Um, regardless. These are the residences, 54321, 5 being the most developed. Um, this is the arrivals building that you saw on site, it's just a flat uh, ground floor. And then these are the hotels that run alongside the hill. So you guys are right now in H2. This is back of house that feeds the rest of the site with mechanical and electrical services. You guys came across the seals office, past the marina, you looked around the church, and then you ended up in DCK's office. Now during shipping times, um, the, the precast walls that come in for the buildings, the ship comes and, and sets and sea, and then the flat bear comes and takes the walls and materials off the uh, ship um, over to the land. During that time, the middle custom sets up security here, and they set up security there. Okay, if your name is not on their list, you'll not be allowed on the site. There were gentlemen that were turned away because they were not on the um, Bermuda uh, customs list, even though they had jobs. Okay, that's why orientations, um, your daily crew and huddle sheet, these are all um, submittable documents. All right, these are the general superintendents. This has changed, um, so this will be updated, but you guys will be 
um, dealing with Baron Thompson for the most part. Okay, now there are cultural expectations. Every single body on site is a safety officer. And one of the main things that I want everyone to be familiar with the activity hazard analysis. Okay, um, not just the guys that sit in the office and say, my guys are going to do this, but the guys that's in the field ought to be well versed and educated on the hazards that's involved with the activities that they do on site. Okay. When you plan safety into uh, your workplace process, and the best example I like to use is TCD. Okay, I don't like my TCD experience either. Okay, I think my um, vehicle mechanical bill is bigger than I thought it was going to be. They found stuff that I didn't know was wrong with my vehicle. But at the end of the day, I kind of fully appreciate um, that someone took the time to go through it. And now I have brakes, I've got lights, I've got no rust. I don't have to worry about my, car, my vehicle breaking down on my way to work uh, where I'm supposed to be making money in the first place. So that's all you want everybody's crew, everybody's machinery, everybody's team to be fully functioning and fully running so that you can now make the money that you want to make. Okay? Um, any unsafe conditions, let somebody know about it and you do not disable safety devices. Okay, there is a disciplinary program. Companies get rid of flags and workers get three strikes. Now there's no tolerance for fall protection, workplace violence and substance abuse. Okay, substance abuse we talked about already. Workplace violence, um, just like in football, somebody slaps you, you turn around, slap them back, two rear cards. Nobody's gonna ask who started it, nobody's gonna ask whose girl is it really. Okay? And fall protection is zero tolerance. And, um, one third of the accidents that happen on site are related to falls. More accidents happen on construction sites than they do on the road. Okay? Uh, however, I don't like focusing on negativity. I'm not in the trees waiting to somebody to take the helmet off and I'm going to jump out at them. It's not like that. Okay? Uh, but for those that participate, those that um, make an effort, um, we have positive recognition, not only in the uh, weekly meetings, not only in the monthly meetings, but we have a end of year um, award presentation coming up next Tuesday at City Hall for uh, anybody in Bermuda. Okay, there's a voting system. Um, guys are voting their, their favorite guys in, and um, whoever has the most votes um, will take home an award and a certificate and a uh, bottle of something bubbly. Okay, now, this control policy is the gate. Now, when that gate doesn't work at all, it's actually worse for you guys on site. Okay, because uh, you got tourists driving around the site, just missing uh, excavators, okay, guys, girlfriends are looking for their child support money, whatever the case may be. It's actually more hazardous when the gate isn't fully functioning. Okay? Now, radios and cell phones are distractions, that's the next line item. So what I like to tell guys, I, I could care less if you have to make a call. Okay, that's not my my, my issue. Um, but what I I want guys to um, be able to do is be able to um, separate what's important and what's not important. Girls will call and talk about nothing. Okay, they really will. Okay, uh, when you're working amongst other guys, working amongst other crews, okay, you may not have time to take every call. Sometimes you gotta let it ring out, and when you finish what you're doing, then you call her back and say, "Sorry, I was busy." Um, and now I can talk to you now. And that's the difference that I want guys to understand. Okay, just because your cell phone goes off doesn't necessarily mean it's important. It may not be important at all. Okay, public exposure, use the washrooms that are available and we have check sheets for all mechanical equipment. If you're gonna be doing any hot works, welding, soldering, torch work, you're gonna need what's called a hot works permit for that. Okay, you're gonna need a fire extinguisher, you're gonna need a shield, and you're gonna need ventilation. Okay, this is an emergency meeting area located outside of the residences. Um, the closest medical facility is Port Royal Fire Station. They not only have uh, fire trucks, but as well as an ambulance. Okay. If you hit 911, they will be on site in 60 seconds. We've had the drills. Okay. And every now and then, you're going to see those trucks driving up and down the site because they want to stay familiar with the temporary roads as they change so that they don't know how to reach you. Okay. Um, make any uh, reports of any such. This is a naval base. Okay, there's a lot of manholes on site that keep popping up, especially during the excavation stages. 
Okay, and we do share some of the roads that we walk on with many of the machines. Okay. Uh, now, everybody's favorite topic, personal tackle equipment. You guys got your harness on? No? Yeah. Now you've been to the drill already. Then you check the inside of your hard hat to see if it's improved. Now the reason is you have a type of hard hat, okay, that's called a bump cap. Okay? And that bump cap is not to be used, is not made to be used on construction sites. That's for shippers, so they don't lean their heads up against the steam pipes. Okay, and that's it. That's for the heat. On the site, these are made for impact. Okay, so that's the difference. They may look the same, but they don't have the same um, makeup. All right, safety glasses, you guys have been through the drill too. Uh, again, uh, check the inside of your arm. Safety glasses are cheaper than prescription glasses and shades, but the difference is safety glasses are made to be shatterproof, okay? So um, that's the, I, can, I, I have no personal problem with prescription glasses or shades, I really don't. Um, they will help keep dust out, but I cannot say that they are safety rated. That's the only difference because they will crack and shatter. Okay, high visibility clothing. You guys already been through that. If you have a t-shirt, you don't need um, a vest per se. Uh, and the reason is, uh, the, is the colors that, it, that makes the difference. Okay, the only time you need a reflective strip, if you're gonna be working night shift, and you don't have a night shift. So the reflective strip is totally useless. Now, <coughs> The main people that complain about guys that don't wear safety shirts, and then you know, the manager is sitting in a meeting, is not estimators uh, sitting in an office, is actually machine operators. Okay, the guys that's driving the site, the crane operators that's swinging the, the loads. Okay, they want to know, even in their peripheral view, where everybody is. Now, if he's doing his list, he's trying to work it, do what he's got to do. And then he runs into somebody that looks like a shadow, then he gets annoyed. Okay? And those are the people that make the most complaints. Okay, it's the machine operators. Okay? Uh, so substantial long pants and shirts with sleeves. Now when it says with sleeves, short sleeves is fine, but it means it doesn't, they don't want to have white beaters. That's what that means. Okay? Um, long pants, I, I was not a big fan in the beginning, um, but I have four pairs of pants coming now that's all ripped up that I didn't even know when it happened. Okay, uh, especially during the early days. So if I was wearing shorts, it would have been rebar the skin. And because I had on long pants, it ripped the pants, and I just felt a breeze later. Okay. Now, wear the shoes or boots that are suitable for the job that you're doing. Okay. Tennis shoes can be worn at tennis stadium. That's what I'm meant for. Construction shoes are meant to be worn on construction sites. Okay, now uh, I don't want to get too deep in the terminology. You have carbon fibers, you have a plastic rated cap, that's totally fine. Okay, as long as it's meant for the work that you're doing. All right, now you don't have to have the um, <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. that's fine. It don't have to have the um, green tape. Yes, on that it. the green tape shows that it's a certified work boot. Now, for example, you have Timberlands that makes a fashion boot. That serves absolutely no purpose at all. No, no. What I was saying was, do they have to be the green ones? Like, if I got some cats, they don't have that green tag on them. Cats are okay, um, but what I want guys to understand is the difference between a fashion boot and a work boot. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, I understand the cheating and all that. Okay. You always got steel to it in. Or, or as long as it don't, like I said, it don't have to be steel. You've got carbon fibers, you've got a plastic cap that's approved and rated. The green triangle really, the only difference in the boot is the bottom's got a steel plate. So if you step on a nail, you're not puncturing your foot. Mm -hmm. The caps are steel toe, but they don't have that steel plate. So you still yeah. could step on a nail. Okay. Now, in um, some circumstances, um, you may need more than these five things of personal type equipment. Okay. You may need hand protection, like if you're offloading a truck, for example, or if you have to handle um, certain materials. Okay. You may need double light protection, okay. i.e. face shield. Uh, you may need hearing protection. Uh, you may need respiratory protection. In some cases, you may, you may need a medical fit test for, a resp for your respiratory protection. We have guys that were installing foam work and pouring concrete underwater. They had their own scuba program. Okay. 
they had to have a first aid CPR watchman only. That's his only job. He's going to sit there and watch what's going on underwater. That's it. No other duties. Okay, they had to have their uh, scuba tanks uh, checked regularly. If anyone went underwater, they have to put their flag up and let everybody else around there know that. But for those of us that work above ground, these are the five basic pieces that you need. Okay. Certifications, that's what I wanted to get at earlier. Okay, right now we have 42 men through this site that have been first aid and CPR trained in here um, through FLS, which is the same fire department that's come to do the rescue. So they're actually teaching us what to do before they hit the site. Okay. Um, also, um, with uh, the college, in the beginning, um, there were about 20 excavators on site when I showed up, everybody digging away. And so I went to the college and I asked, can we have a um, certification program for the excavators that's on site? Because they had never been through an excavation program before. Okay, they hadn't had an excavation program in 15 years. So they said, if you give us eight guys, we'll give you a classroom. So 14 guys went into the class, and now all 14 guys have um, um, excavation certification from Bermuda College. And the big difference with these guys was their attitudes that changed. They weren't worrying about getting laid off. Um, they were coming to work singing and happy and they said they could use their certification anywhere in the world. So um, some of those guys went airport, some of those guys went foreign. One guy went to Honduras, okay, from what he had received. Then we moved on to the cranes and 15 guys went to the crane class and now all 15 have um, crane certifications from computer coverage. Okay, and CCR as well is what we're affiliated with. Okay, uh, you guys are well versed with that. Um, now, what I did want to talk about was OSHA Education Center. For example, let's say you didn't want to be in a class or you, you didn't have time for night school or whatever the case may be. Um, OSHA Education Center is all online. You can sit back in your parking lot and do this on your phone if you wanted to. Okay, you can do this on your laptop. You can do this at home right before you fall asleep. Okay. They have one hour courses, 10 hour courses, 30 hour courses, and some of them are like $20. Okay, so um, I want everyone to have the ability um, to receive a certification uh, here locally without having to go away. Um, Ives was put on through uh, Delco uh, for high lifts uh, and machinery. Okay, and um, locally, uh, when on in house on site, no matter what term you want to use, you can also do uh, tally handlers as well as a uh, host survivor machine. Now, are you guys familiar with powder actuated tools? Yeah, okay. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, with the nail gun or no, the Hilti or the Hilti gun, all okay. right, it's gone part. Yeah. Gone part is gone part. It's no different. I need a permit. So, exactly. And you get your permit from police station. Okay? So you wouldn't want someone walking around with a tool like that knowing what it can do if they don't know how to use it. Okay? So that's why we promote as many um, programs as possible. Okay? So, fall protection, you guys' favorite. Um, so, by the act, the law, the regulations, OSHA, and CCR, Everybody knows and everybody agrees that full protection is required when I'm working above six feet. Okay? That's easy in theory, it's easy to say, that's easy to remember. But what we want guys to understand is when you're working at any height, you have to start thinking about how to protect yourself and for it. Okay, so you guys are more familiar with um, this particular uh, division than the other guys because you have to work with it so often, okay? Um, but you still have to go through the drill. So, uh, the most important part on a harness is what do you guys call it? D ring. Okay, D ring. Uh, the MCCR is known as a D ring. I don't care what you call it, but it's important that you understand what other guys are saying. Uh, the D ring is expected to be rated at how many pounds? Five dollars pounds. I I even made that up just now, but usually I do. I think it's three. I think it's three. Five dollars. No, no, it's fine. 
But I usually just say it. I never ask it. Anyway, so it's 5,000 pounds. Okay, no. I weigh 225 pounds. So why does the D ring have to be 5,000? Force of money fall. So, shock of the fall. Very good. So most guys understand the concept, but um, it's important that we all understand the same language. Okay, and that's good as well. Now, um, so you have two different types of um, harnesses. What do you guys call the two basic types? You got the um, you got the three point harness and five point harness. Okay, but you have um, one in terms of sorry, one point and three point. Fall rest. That's what I was getting at. Mm. And fall strength. Strength. Exactly. You guys know it. Okay. No. Forward strength. Okay. Typically, uh, working high up um, has a shock absorber. Okay. Um, and that opens up to slow down your fall in case that were to happen. Forward strength. This is a particular forward strength one, but um, that usually is about three feet. The rebar guys have them. At, uh, different types of ones. But anyway. Um, now, for example, this is a question I, I like to ask is in a gloom lift, scissor lift, arrow lift, you have a hump, you have a top rail, mid rail, and a toe board. Why do you think it's, it would still be necessary to wear a harness and a lanyard? Typically they all have anchor points located in the bottom corner. So why do you think if you got a hand you got a handrail, you got a mid rail and a toe board, why do you think, think you still need to wear a, um, a harness board? Yeah, exactly, right. So I know you guys know better than the rest. So I notice when I drive through Sundays and I go to town and I see these guys, like you said, if they're going to a new location, like maybe up to a window or alongside, I see everybody grabbing one, right? Right? Everybody's holding on because statistically they can get thrown out and that's happened plenty of times. So that's why the uh, anchor point is low. And that's why you use a restraint. Okay, so everybody got a chance to down a harness. You want a harness before? Yeah, I like to look uh, nice and big. This one's big. Probably fits me. So that's why it keeps it in there because it's. Hmm? We got some big ones. Yeah, that's a nice one. The brighter green ones are our big ones. All right, so not only do you need to deal with harnesses, but The base strap is the same, it looks the same. I always grab the normal one. You gotta keep behind it. Where you got this one from? This one fits. It's good. I ain't found one that fits yet, bro. <laughs> Try the green ones in that toolbox. Actually, they're off the yard. I always work my way down so nothing gets tangled on you. Yeah. Chest, hip, legs. Done. 